Hey everyone, so for the past two years, I've been doing a lot of work from home and normally I'd be working out of a study nook in our apartment, but this year I've been really blessed to be able to get this entire room to design as my own office. And so I thought it'd be a good chance for me to take you through my desk setup for 2022. But before I get into the whole desk setup, uh, there was a lot of prep that went into things before I even started putting my desk together and you know putting things on it. Um, a lot of that really helped me think through the process and get a better result in the end. The first thing I did to prep was to go on Pinterest and look at different interior design styles and kind of just build a vision for what theme I wanted to have for my desk space. One of the biggest mistakes I've made in the past is just buying random things that I thought looked good and then only afterwards realizing that they're all just a mishmash of random items and it doesn't work well together. So by doing research and developing like a vision or a mood board, um, I kind of knew what direction I was going in and that it would all work out nicely in the end. Normally when it comes to interior design, the first thing I think of is, you know, white, clean, uh, crisp desk setups. And, you know, it's kind of like the Ikea Scandi theme where you might have birch timber wood or uh, white tabletops, uh, lots of plants and greenery, and just like kind of a really fresh, clean vibe. And while there's nothing wrong with that, and I think it looks really great, uh, my previous desk setup was white. So this time I wanted to do something different, something, um, something dark. So. I mean, I'm a web designer and I really like user interface design. And one thing I really love is dark mode. And nowadays, so many apps are implementing dark mode. You know, like dark mode used to be something that only was available for text editors, um, you know, for coders and developers to reduce eye strain when they're coding all night long. Uh, but now it's kind of filtered its way down into, you know, even text applications like Notion and also even into entire operating systems like OS X has it and then so does the iOS. Uh, so it's definitely a trend, but but I thought it would be cool to apply that to the real life and you know do this as my desk setup with a dark feature wall. So I searched on Pinterest for dark office, dark feature wall, um, dark interior design and there was lots of ideas that came up and I noticed a couple of themes popping through and I'm not sure if it's exactly right but I did get a sense that mid-century modern kind of has that vibe that complements a dark feature wall really well. So there were elements like you know brass and gold accents, uh, warm timber wood colors, uh, things like walnut and herringbone. And I just thought combined together with like matte black, everything just looks so premium and quality. So that was the design thing that I wanted to go for. Once I decided on the theme, then I had to figure out the layout of the space. And again, usually what I would do is just put things wherever I thought looked good and then just randomly add to it over time. Um, but naturally that would just lead to a jumbled mess again. So this time I tried to be a bit more deliberate in the way that I plan things. And I thought about like the functions that I needed the space to have. And for me, I needed obviously my main workspace and workstation, but then I also needed a second area just for filming videos and for putting my camera and, you know, tripod and lights. And, you know, for example, this microphone and, and notes and a small desk um, for me to sit at and talk to you guys. So after thinking about a couple configurations, what I did was I actually moved furniture into different layouts and formats. And I actually tried living with them for a couple of days just to get a sense of how it feels. And I mean, I guess it gets really like touchy feely when I talk about this stuff, but it really is about the vibe you get in the space at different times of day even, like thinking about how the morning light will affect your morning workflow. Um, how the night light will affect your night workflow. And it depends also on your own rhythms. Like if you're more productive in the morning, you might wanna set up your space uh, to be more optimal for morning workflows. But if you're more of a nighttime person, maybe lighting doesn't really matter in terms of daylight. And then you can just design like artificial lighting situations that will work for you. For me, I went with my desk up against the wall behind me and not against a wall with a window because I really like to work during the daytime but if I had a desk right up against a window, I would get a lot of contrast from you know, outside the window versus my monitor. And I really don't wanna be looking out the window um, and seeing all that bright light shining into my eyes. So um, for me, I really wanted my workstation up against the black feature wall to provide some contrast and just um, a neutral kind of base for my eyes to rest on. Uh, so these are like really small considerations, but you won't actually pick them up until you actually live in the space and try working in them for a bit and testing out different scenarios. So once I had the layout dialed in, it was time to actually start painting the wall and putting things into motion. So we spent about a day, you know, cleaning and prepping the space. 
and then also painting. It was my first time painting a wall with such a bold and dark color, so it was pretty intimidating, but thankfully it worked out okay, and I'm really happy with the result. I mean, there is a couple of small imperfections, but you can only see them if you go really, really close or if you know where to look. Um, but yeah, it looks really good. I'm really happy with it. It was a really fun experience. And if you want to transform your workspace and get the maximum bang for your buck, I think painting the wall or painting a feature wall is going to be one of the best things you can do to really transform the space that you're living in. So now that the prep, the layout and the painting was all out of the way, it's time to get into the meat and bones of the setup, which is the desk itself. So my desk is made of two components. Uh, the first is a motorized sit-stand frame, which is from a company called Desky here in Australia. I got the matte black version. It looks really sleek and it's a super strong uh, desk frame that can hold a really heavy payload. And it just looks really premium and high quality. It was really important for me to have like a sit-stand desk because uh, for me, I spent a long time at my desk and being able to stand up is really important, not only for my posture, but it also helps me uh, focus better mentally. Uh, and just being able to change things up helps me refresh myself and not, you know, slouch in my chair all day and, you know, start to fall asleep or uh, zone out. The tabletop I got from IKEA, it's actually a kitchen countertop that I've been eyeing for a really long time uh, called the Barker Boda. And the reason why is because it has like a really beautiful walnut finish and it has a really unique uh, herringbone pattern that you can't really find anywhere else. The other great thing about using an IKEA kitchen countertop is the fact that it's really, really thick and the thickness really gives a premium uh, quality and a premium vibe. I know that underneath it's just particle board, but I mean, at the end of the day, that actually makes it cheaper and more cost effective and also lighter when it in terms of weight. So uh, I wasn't too fussed about that. My main concern was the finish and the look and the thickness. Underneath the desk, I have a cable management channel from a third party. Uh, it also has a power board snapped into it that helps take a lot of the cables off the ground. And there's actually even another space to snap in another power board in future if I need it. The cables themselves are pretty messy. I still haven't organized them perfectly, but I would like to call it organized chaos. Um, but yeah, the channel does its job. It's lifting all the cables off the ground so I can clean underneath easily. And from above, you really can't see it. Moving up to the desktop, it's actually super clean and minimal. When I first set it up, I actually wanted to put lots of different things on my desk, uh, but then I realized just to clear it all off, um, not only because it looks better, but it also because I rethought how I wanted the desk to function in terms of zones. So the first zone is on one side of the desk, which is obviously for my workstation. And then that's where I'll do all my deep work. It's like where I'm doing design, coding, um, video editing and stuff like that. On the other side of the desk is a more clearer open space and that's where also where my iPad and iPhone sit. And the point of this open space is just to have a clear space where I can, you know, get out a sketchbook or notepad or pieces of paper and just do doodling or drawing, uh, plan things out um, and make notes. I found over the years I tend to prioritize sketching and drawing less and less and less, especially physical drawing as opposed to digital drawing. Uh, and so I wanted to have this dedicated space to remind myself of the practice and to get myself to do more of it. It also serves as a space where I can dismount my iPad and draw using the stylus in Procreate. Now it's been really great to have this kind of dedicated space to drawing, but this space also has a second function, which is to keep me distraction free. So by putting my iPhone and iPad further away down the other side of the desk, I tend to not get as distracted by things like notifications and social media. Um, in fact, what I've tried to do is have a complete split of the things I do on my iPad and my iPhone versus what I do on my workstation. And my workstation is 100% set up just for deep work. Like there's nothing on the hard drives. I didn't even import my photos or my movies or music from iTunes over into this new uh, computer. I've kept it completely empty and just like a shell just for working. And similarly, I treat my iPad and iPhone as purely as consumption devices. Uh, that's where, you know, I'll get distracted by things like YouTube or Discord. Um, and so, yeah, basically in my mind, I've mentally placed those things on those devices and everything that is deep work happens on my laptop.
So I guess that's a good segue into my laptop, which is my main computer and it's also new. So recently I just upgraded to the 14 inch 2021 MacBook Pro M1 Max with 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte hard drive. Uh, it's seriously amazing. Like I went from the 2015 model uh, and then I skipped all the generations in between. And then now when I saw this one come out, I was like, I have to pull the trigger and get this one because it's got all the ports. Um, and also it has an amazing performance bump that can't be denied. Like I was literally shocked when I saw how powerful it is. I chose the 14 inch model because it's ultra portable. Um, and I prefer that portability over other things like battery life and performance speed and even better thermals. Like I know the 16 inch has a lot of uh, advantages because of physics and you know its internal design, uh, but I really value portability over everything. So just behind the computer is my Bluetooth speaker. I don't have like a proper computer speaker set up because I'm not much of an audiophile. Um, and also I just like the look of this speaker. It's like super sleek and clean uh, and the sound quality is really great. When I need better sound quality for things like video editing, I'll just use my headphones, which are a, a set of Beats Solo Pro. Uh, they're wireless headphones uh, with noise cancellation and they're really good. Unfortunately, they're a bright red color, which doesn't really match the theme of my desk, uh, but at the time they're on special, so um, I couldn't say no. The funny thing is I may not even need this Bose SoundLink Mini 2 anymore because the MacBook Pro has amazing speakers. Like that was the one feature of the MacBook Pro that I was so amazed with because I'd read so many reviews talking about how good the performance is or the battery life is or how many ports there are, but the speakers are so underrated. And when I heard them, I, sometimes I find myself just using them naturally. Um, I don't even question where the sound source is. It just, it just sounds so good. So above the speaker, I have obviously my monitor and that is the Dell P2715Q. And it's a really old monitor. It's maybe like five or six years old, maybe even older than that, um, but it does the job. And most importantly, it's 4K resolution. I did have plans to get a really huge widescreen curve monitor, but at the moment supply chains around the world are so terrible. Like I put down an order around August and by December it still hadn't come and I just decided to cancel the order because I felt like by the time the order actually comes, uh, the monitor might be outdated. So uh, I'm just gonna put that on hold and figure it out later. Holding up the monitor is the Ergotron HX monitor arm and this thing is a heavy duty beast. Um, but it also has amazing build quality. Like I never thought of monitor arms as like a luxury or high quality item. I just thought it's an arm. It's overkill for my current monitor, but it gives me space to upgrade in future if I need to. It works really well and has a bunch of adjustability and it just looks really awesome with the matte black finish against the black feature wall. The only other thing I have in this area of the space is a fun little Stormtrooper resin figure and then also my MX Master 3 mouse, which I think every single YouTuber has this mouse, uh, but there's a reason for it and it really is as good as people say it is. Uh, it's just so ergonomic and everything feels really high quality and dialed in to the nth degree. So I really can't recommend this mouse enough. In the distraction zone of my desk, I have obviously my iPhone, which is an iPhone SE from 2020. I really think it's the perfect iPhone for me. I really don't need like a lot of the bells and whistles in a lot of the other iPhones. But more importantly, this iPhone is the perfect size for my hands and it just feels really comfortable to hold and use. It's sitting on a white Belkin charger stand, which is a stand that I got a while back when I had a white desk set up. So it doesn't really match this theme either, but I'll have to upgrade that in future. I've seen Grove made make a really awesome walnut colored uh, charger. So I hope I can get that in future. Or if someone from Grove made is watching and feels like they want to send me one, um, I wouldn't say no. So <laughs> Next to that is my iPad Pro 2021. I bought this as a replacement for my Wacom tablet, but I have to say, I'm still not used to the stylus yet. It's a bit weird, uh, but I think once I dial in the settings in Procreate for brushes, I should be able to get the hang of it. For my chair, I'm using a chair called the Finley from West Elm. It's got a beige fabric finish and really nice brass gold legs. Uh, the wheels swivel really nicely and glide across the floor really well. Um, and it's just a really nice chair. Finally, for the finishing touches, I've got a run-up floor lamp from IKEA, which was really cheap and really good value. And then on the window shelf, I have some plants. I've got a Monstera clipping and Devil's Ivy, along with my stationery. And I've put them inside Perspex boxes from Muji. Uh, just really handy and allows you to see everything that's inside so you know what you'll get going for. 
Uh, so this is where I store all my Copic markers, my ink pens, pencils, and just random uh, knickknacks that I don't have anywhere else for. And that's it for my minimal desk setup for 2022. If there's three things I want you to take away from this video to help you with your space, I would say the first thing is to have a vision or idea or theme for what you want to do with your space by looking on Pinterest and researching interior design. The second thing would be to design your layouts thinking about function before doing anything else. When you think about the things and the systems you need to go about your day to day, it'll help inform where you place your furniture and the optimal positioning. And finally, to make sure your decisions are correct, spend some time living in various configurations and get a sense of what it's like in different light configurations, you know, daytime, nighttime, morning and evening. Because this is a space that you not only want to be productive in, but also feel happy, inviting, cozy, and just a place that you really want to spend a lot of time in. Let me know if you have any comments or questions, and I'll also leave a link in the description to a kit page with links to all the items that I've mentioned in this video. Hey guys, so as I was finishing up the edit for this video, I realized I forgot to add two things. So number one is if you like the desktop wallpaper that you saw throughout this video, uh, please go check out my website at jwalkerpictures.com. Uh, there you'll be able to purchase it along with many other items, including this t-shirt. Uh, it's called the Dark Mode Premium Tea. Pick one up for yourself. It will help support the channel and allow me to continue doing art and making videos. The second thing I forgot to mention is that I actually realized I have a really old video of my previous desk setup on the channel. So I think it's really interesting to see. Uh, if you go check it out, you'll be able to see the difference between uh, not only my setup, but also the video quality between then and now. So yeah, I just think it's really cool to see. Anyway, that's it from me. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.